Morning. I'm in a mood. <laughs> Why are you so grumpy? <laughs> Uh, honestly, I have no idea. I don't have any particular reason for being in a mood. I'm just, I woke up this morning in a mood. People will be like, you're living the dream. Why are you in a mood? Oh, yeah, no. You can live the dream and still be in a mood. <laughs> it's like, the dream, is, the dream is one thing, but it doesn't mean that there aren't, you know, countervailing... Human like, emotions. Human emotions and pressures and... You know, just sort of a, a, well, digestive issues. Like, all I'm saying is, I'm in a mood. <laughs> so, on that note. <laughs> <clears throat> we're making a short trip. Yesterday, we moored at the furthest mooring on the... Relief Channel. Relief Channel. That's um, the word. Between <laughs> Market Drayton and Kings Lynn. Or we possibly down in Market. And Kings Lynn. Why do I keep calling it Market Day? Between <laughs> <laughs> Down and Market in Kings Lynn. And we took a walk to, I'll probably say this wrong as well, Wiggleston, St. Peter. <laughs> what is it called? It's right there. Wigan, Wigan Hall. Hall. <laughs> to the church. We're at Wigan Hall. Wigan Hall, Mary Mag St. Mary Mag. We're at Wigan Hall, St. Mary Magdalene wa wa Moorings. And we walked to St. Peter's Church, which is in ruins. Um, it was quite fascinating, like it's quite unusual. Yeah, thing. actually it's in, I mean it really is very fascinating. Um, it's, it's, a, it's interesting because it was a nunnery founded in like the 1200s. It's quite old. Um, it had considerable history there because it was founded by a nun who really just wanted a place to... For her. Yeah, for her to study and worship and everything. And she got a grant of land from the lord that owned the area. You know, they had a, a farm and they added a few small fields and over time various people came and added houses and then things went into disrepair and more money was needed. And the prioress who sort of centered on most of this for about, you know, a 40 year time did a huge amount of work on building it out to the church that it currently is almost immediately upon finishing the work died mm. um, and then not long after Thomas Cromwell on the orders of Henry VIII came in and essentially accused all of the remaining nuns of which there were four including the current prioress of various acts of infamy and scandal and and basically said that they'd fathered children by local men and possibly by Satan. I don't know about that one, but you know. And then when the actual assessors came in and, and checked the value of the building, they, they said, no, you know, the women are all of good character and name and we're all given small awards, except for the prioress herself, and eventually pensions um, and told to leave home and their, the property goods were sold off and the 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 interior of the building started to go into ruin so this was in 1530 something and it's stood there ever since and and apparently just a hundred and something years ago uh it was found completely covered in vines and somebody hacked back the vines oh, and, really? yeah I so yeah and it's, it's just like it's incredibly good condition considering and i mean the well it did have a restoration oh did it yeah it's had it's had a bit of a restoration okay, like, like, but, but the walls are all kind of have their integrity and there's still bits of glass which is just incredible yeah little bits of still colored glass up in tiny little corners of bits of lead you can see in the windows and there's still some carvings up on the walls mm. and and some of the little um, you know, water spouts and everything are still largely intact with, with little gargoyle faces around them and stuff. And it's just really quite an interesting building. You can guess from seeing other churches where, like, everything would have been, the pews and stuff. But, but it's, it's really just walls yeah. and, yeah, and, and a tower. Um, it's a really lovely walk there because you walk along the, the bank, the raised bank, which is between the Great Ooze and the Relief Channel. So it's interesting to see the ooze with the... Um, tied far out. Which, Literally oozing. <laughs> because that's obviously where we came up um, a few days ago. Um, the only interesting, only not so interesting thing is you walk past the sewage works. So there's a little yeah. bit of a smell. This, 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 uh, this there's is a like, brief moment of perhaps we should turn. This, is, this is kind of <laughs> oval kind of channel where the water's, you can look down on it and the water's being filtered. Yeah, there's a current moving it along and an aerator that keeps it moving and, and, and then seagulls, seagulls just are 
We're floating around in it. And then randomly there's a life ring there, and it's like if... It, oh, a fish. Mm -hmm. If someone needs a life ring in there, they've, they've got bigger... Something's gone very, very wrong. Problems. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, yeah, really nice here, really peaceful. Um, there was a bank holiday weekend and it's been sunny for the first time all year. So there was quite a few groups of kids coming down to to jump in the water. Mm -hmm. which is... Well, there's a couple jumping off the bridge on the far side, but at the very least that seemed, albeit not necessarily sensible because the water's quite cold, mm -hmm. but at least there was a pathway for them to get out. Um, and there were some kids who brought down some boats, like inflatable, inflatable dinghies, and fair enough, because they, they can continue down to the next... Yeah, I don't think they came back. I think they just went down. Yeah, so they can continue the on way. to the next mooring or wherever they can find somewhere to get off. But a couple of... a group of kids who rode bicycles up here from uh, King's Thanks. Lynn... <laughs> who asked us where, you know, have you brought the boat anywhere deep? And I was like, oh, the wash. And they're like, where's the wash? I'm like, you live, you live right kids. beside it. How do you not know about the wash? Oh, anyway, <laughs> they'd ridden up here and uh, and were obviously overheated and wanted to get into the water and they were just all standing we around going, should we go in, should we not? I mean, like, the signs no, are saying- probably shouldn't. Signs that say no swimming everywhere. But... I, was, I was standing there trying to discourage them, basically just being like, you know, answering all sorts of Strange questions about America and stuff, and being, you know, they're like, do you think, do you think I could get out again? No. Do you, you know, do you think it's really deep? It's very deep. Do you think it's really cold? Yes, it's extremely cold. Are those fish? Some of them are eels. <laughs> Eventually, they decided to leave. Although one of them left his shorts for some strange reason. And then, yeah, some more. Did you hear the ones that came down later? And... No, oh, they were just having a little party and stuff. Yeah, but those were all. Those were like. The, the thing I was worried about was the little kids. The, the littler ones. There was like one taller one who I could see possibly being able to get himself out again because of sort of upper body strength. But a couple of the smaller ones, especially the ones who were most keen to, or at least saying they were the most keen to jump in, <laughs> albeit never actually getting into the swim trunks, um, were uh, were definitely small enough that I couldn't see them getting back out again. Because there's, there's no ladder on this thing. There's nothing to grip onto. So today, just a little hop back to down and market yes which is the third mooring that way uh, there was a space yesterday so hopefully we can get on there and just pop into the town quickly and then we'll either stay there or we'll go back to denver yeah i'm thinking because it's a bit of a walk into the tesco and stuff and we're gonna need to load up with stuff so i'm thinking we go together get the groceries bring everything back and then that's it for today that's what and I'm tomorrow thinking. or the next day when we continue on we'll go through denver yeah not stop there not stop and go up the river wissy so that's yeah. my vote okay all right that's that's, that's her vote so we've got a majority of one <laughs> where's george i'm abstaining george is over there what do you want to do george hmm? george george is currently oh we got to get a shot of this he's he's just yeah we, I, I don't have my phone that's my phone we got to take out our phone so we can get a shot of this <laughs> all right let's so we're go. gonna go now Say this relief channel is quite an unusual navigation compared to the waterways we're used to travelling on. I kind of wish they'd have come up with a more romantic and less descriptive name for it though. Compared to most canals on the network, this man-made waterway is pretty young, having finally been built in the 1960s. I say finally because the Dutch engineer Vermoyden, whose land reclamation methods were used extensively in England in the 17th century, first suggested the idea of the channel in 1642 as a solution to the regular flooding that occurred on the Ilius. In the 1960s this new channel was cut after serious flooding occurred in the previous decades. It runs alongside the river for about 10.5 miles all the way to Kings Lynn. Once it was constructed, the Elius could be discharged into the tidal river via the Denver Sluice or sent along the new cutoff channel and down the relief channel. Since 
in 2001, a lock was installed in Denver, so the relief channel has only been open to traffic for about 20 years. I did hear that originally there were plans to have a lock back onto the river at King's Lynn with a marina there too, but that never happened. It would have been great for the town though, and it would have meant that we could have avoided the tricky tidal section when we crossed the wash last week. The moorings at the Heron are still just as busy today. Fingers crossed there's still room for us at the Downham Market ones. I tell a lie, one boat seems to have left. There isn't a lot to see along here, other than the wildlife of course. The landscape that you do see is very green. We're very much enjoying the huge blue skies though, and we're really grateful for that new lock at Denver, meaning that we could travel along here. We're a little bit backlit, sorry about the lighting. Michael is wearing a backpack full of groceries because we've just got back from down in the market. Um, yeah, it's about a 15 minute walk that way to a Morrison's and a Tesco's and the whole town. It's quite a pretty town. Yeah, really nice little market town, obviously, from the name. Yeah, and there's a train station Literally right across the bridge. And there's actually a laundrette too, yeah. but we didn't take any laundry. No, no. And we don't really have any reason to make, we don't have enough to make a return trip worthwhile. Just over here is a little park for George and yeah, it's a nice little setup actually. Yes, yeah, so this is another good stop and we're actually not far, I think, that's not the sluice, but this, you can see the sluice from here at the end of the... Yep, that's what, uh, well no, there's, a, there, there's a boat in the way, but right, yeah. right just over there is the sluice uh, of the Denver, Denver complex. The lock's just around the corner, so you're really only about maybe six or seven minutes away from the lock. But I think we're going to stay here. Yeah, I mean, all we could do is just go up and then... More up there. More up, and it's a um, relatively hot, nice and sunny bank holiday Monday, so the odds are pretty good that there's still some boats. We might be busy up there. Yeah, it's been um, busy down here on the river. I mean, busy. <laughs> yeah, we've seen two boats and a swimmer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to stay here tonight and then move on after that. Yep. Hopefully, there's nobody playing any loud thumping music, which apparently happened last week. Says who? One of the boats that I ran into, the nice guy who walked over, he's like, uh, if you're stopped on that one, uh, we were there, it was nice, but then there was some loud thumping music. Okay. I really hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, <laughs> It's a, yeah, there's no particular obvious reason for it to happen. Yeah, but, but people just wander down here to sit by the water, which is understandable. And yeah, no well, this one, unlike the other one, actually would make a decent place to go swimming too. You know, Why? Cause, well, because you can kind of, there's some area to pull yourself out and stuff. There's no actual ladder, but there's more to grip on to. It also still says no, no swimming. swimming. <laughs> Strong current. Strong current. <laughs> Although Michael does quite fancy a swim. I do, but it also do says beware unguarded drops, and uh, I, I, yeah, I'm more afraid of unguarded drops than I am of swimming. So I'll stay away from the edge just in case. <laughs> All right. Is that okay. it? Is that it? Hope Where's you enjoyed it? this cruise on the Relief Channel. Yeah. The it was a relief. The inventively named, <laughs> descriptively named Relief, relief Channel. Relief Channel. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Okay, so thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you want to get time-lapse videos. And click that bell for notifications. Also, whatever you've loaded in here, it's too heavy for me to... Most of it's for you. Yeah, I keep sort of leaning backwards because it's pulling back on me.